Today I'm going to be taking an inside look at the KEF Q350 bookshelf speaker so we can get an idea of its construction and build quality. If you like seeing these types of videos, make sure you hit that like button. I use the amount of likes a video receives as votes to determine which videos I do more of next. The KEF Q350s have a retail price of $799 and can be found on sale quite regularly throughout the year for $500. The versions that I purchased are finished in a beautiful vinyl walnut wrap and go well with my bedroom decor. KEF also offers these speakers in white and black if those colors suit your decor better. So what do you get for your $799? Let's find out. What I find fascinating about Kev's speakers is their UniQ driver array, which houses both a woofer and tweeter into a single speaker. This is called a coaxial speaker design, and it offers superb imaging and bass response for a speaker of this size. I'll talk more about how the Kev Q350 sounds in my up and coming review video. To remove the UniQ driver, I first need to remove the plastic beauty ring around the woofer. This trim ring is pressure fit and is held in by six rubber grommets that are installed on the front baffle. Thankfully, KEF doesn't use any double-sided tape to hold in their trim rings. This is something Focal can't say with their Aria 906 model that I had in for review last month. I still can't get over how a $2,200 set of speakers is held together with double-sided tape. The UniQ driver array is held in with six Phillips head screws. These screws are screwed directly into the MDF on the front baffle and contain no metal inserts for strength. There might be other brands that offer metal inserts in this price range, but the only ones that I have come across so far are the B&W 600 series from a few generations ago. Anyways, it's not uncommon to see the omission of metal inserts at this price point. After all the screws are removed, I then carefully tip the speaker over so the UniQ driver will fall right into my hand. Well there it is, the heart of the Q350 bookshelf speaker, the UniQ driver array. This is a 6.5 inch driver that features an aluminum cone and a stamped steel basket. The aluminum tweeter is 1 inch in diameter and is mounted in the center of the base driver, creating a single source point of sound. This tweeter contains a neodymium magnet and a tangerine waveguide. What I found really cool is that the engineers at KEF designed the entire base driver to also act as one huge waveguide for the tweeter. That means the tangerine waveguide works in tangent with the base driver to improve the response of the tweeter. Even the rubber surround on the speaker driver, which Kev calls a Z-Flex surround, is designed not to interfere with the response of the tweeter. So what does all this technology do? In theory, when a high frequency wave is generated from the tweeter, it will smoothly roll off the cone, improving dispersion and off-access response. This is one of the reasons why these small Kev bookshelf speakers image so well. Both the tweeter and mid-range driver had an impedance of 3 ohms when using my trusty Fluke digital multimeter. Now let's find out how much this driver weighs. On my scale, the Q350 driver came in at 4 pounds and 13.7 ounces. I'm not surprised by this because the Q350 has a pretty beefy motor structure for a speaker of this size. Now let's get this driver on the bench so I can measure its TS parameters. Wow, I'm a bit surprised by the resonant frequency of this driver, which measured around 72 Hz. The reason I say this is the KEF Q350 has some really nice bass extension that impressed me for a speaker of this size. They must get this low bass extension from the port tuning in the cabinet. As a general rule of thumb, a lower resonant frequency indicates a speaker that would be better suited for low frequency reproduction than one with a higher frequency. Here's the chart showing the port tuning of the Q350 after I performed an impedance sweep on it. The lowest point between the two humps is the port tuning, which came in around 47 Hz. KEF is using a really nice driver in the Q350. This is a well damped and low inductance driver design. So what does all this mean? A low inductance driver will give the speaker great transient response as well as better sound quality. Kef did a pretty decent job on the construction of this cabinet. 
The front baffle measured in at 1.34 inches thick. Nice job, Kef. I can't think of another set of speakers in this price point that has a front baffle that is this thick in size. No doubt, Kef was thinking about resonance when designing the front baffle on this cabinet. The sides and rear of the cabinet walls are 0.59 inches thick, and there is a single brace in the center of the enclosure to prevent the side walls from flexing. As for the dampening material inside the enclosure, there isn't much there. To be honest, I'm a bit disappointed with the dampening approach that Kef took because I feel two bunched up rolls of polyfill is a bit lacking for speakers that have an MSRP of $799. The good news is this can be easily rectified for a few bucks by purchasing your own dampening material and lining the inside of the enclosure with it yourself. I'll leave some links in the description to some of the products that I use to dampen speaker enclosures with. The speaker port measured in at 6 and 5 eighths inches in length and has a diameter of 2 inches. Kef also flared both ends of the speaker port which should minimize port noise. During my listening sessions I couldn't hear any port noise at all and that's even with them cranked up to some pretty loud levels. There are no surprises here, the crossover is pretty basic, which is pretty common at this price point. Kef is using a very simple first order crossover design for the Q350. The tweeter circuit is using a polycap, which is nice to see, but unfortunately the woofer circuit has an iron core inductor, but again isn't surprising at all for this price point. I have toyed with the idea of redesigning the crossover for the Kef Q350, so maybe I might do an upgrade video series on these speakers at a later date. I'm no expert at all at designing crossovers, but I sure wouldn't mind giving it a go. Even if I can't get a new crossover design to work, at the very least I could swap out the iron core inductor with the same size air core inductor and it should enhance the sound quality quite a bit. The terminal cup is held in by four Phillips head screws and is very easy to remove. The gold plated speaker terminals will accept banana plugs once you remove the black and red plastic plugs that have been installed in them. At times these plugs can be a pain to remove, but I'm told these plugs are required by law in Europe because the wall plugs are round and are of the same size as a standard banana plug. I guess these plugs are there to prevent someone from accidentally plugging their speakers into the electrical outlet. If anyone from Europe is watching, please fill us in on these plastic plugs. I'm curious about the story regarding them. The only ferromagnetic components that I found on the speaker terminals were from the steel nuts that fastened them to the plastic terminal cup. The steel nuts can be easily replaced with ones made from brass. If you want to hear my opinion on how the Kef Q350 sound, make sure to check out my up and coming review video, which I should have out next month. The Kef Q350 is one of my favorite bookshelf speakers at this price point. These speakers offer both superb sound quality and decent cabinet construction, which can be hard to find in this price category. When these speakers are on sale for $500, I can't think of another bookshelf speaker that I would rather have than the Q350. And that's my look inside video of the Kef Q350. If you want a pair of these speakers, please let me know what you think about them by leaving a comment down below. So long and happy listening.